What's up, everybody? It's the Roundtable Sports Podcast. My name is Taylor McLean, and we're here for week 13 with our first game of the week being the Philadelphia Eagles dismantlement of the Tennessee Titans. Two playoff teams that I have expectations for going forward. So I wanted to take a look at this from the first window of games. I said I have expectations and I do for both these teams they vary pretty widely but still so to see them go up against each other and and clash is supposed to give us a pretty good feel for where both these teams are at in the hierarchy of the playoffs and of the league in, in general so to see Philadelphia dominate the way it did in the trenches was pretty impressive it seemed pretty clear early on that while the Eagles were going to try and poke a little bit at the run, that they were going to try and work the outsides of the defense first. And they were going to try and win with AJ Brown and Devontae Smith on the outside, which in retrospect and just saying it out loud period without the retrospect sounds like the way that you would want to attack the Tennessee Titans. If you have the ability The Titans have been pretty good at getting a rush on their opponents with just their front four and and with bringing some blitzes, but really just playing solid defense overall. So to see the Philadelphia Eagles switch stance, so to speak. So if they were a right-handed UFC fighter, then they would have switched stances here and gone with the left hand because usually the right hand is bludgeoning you with the run game and with uh, some some horizontal stuff and then hitting you over the top. This time it was more working the edges and the outside and then kind of trying to touch them up with the rest of it. And that's something that is very interesting for the Philadelphia Eagles overall, because if they have aspirations to be the Super Bowl champion this year, you're going to have to win multiple types of games. So you're going to want to be able to run it on some teams. You're going to want to be want to be able to pass it on some teams. And if you can keep a defense from knowing exactly what you're going to do on a given play, whether it be run or pass, then that keeps them on a string and keeps them guessing. And pass rushers can't tee it up and come after your quarterback every play because they know what's coming or vice versa. You want to be more balanced overall and even though they didn't run the ball that well today this was a a good step in that direction because not only is it a smart move by the coaching staff to pretty much seed that you knew you were going to have to work the edges of this defense and and get big plays to win this game you you didn't you know bang your head up against a wall that that probably wasn't going to be there now if you hadn't had like a million false start penalties there there might have been some better opportunities to run the ball as well but to give the Tennessee Titans credit for anything in this game they did a good job of standing up against the run and against the Philadelphia attack at least in that part of it and then they just got overwhelmed overall by the talent of the receivers and and mainly of course A.J. Brown but Devontae Smith had his moments as well and it helps to have you know, Devonte and AJ out there so that you can't key or overly go to one side. Obviously, if you're going to do one versus the other, it would be AJ, but you just see how physical he is and how tough he is that that might not even work if you're going to d- double him or do whatever you're going to do now. Maybe if you're double teaming, he doesn't beat that guy on the double move. And, and when the guy goes to interfere with him, just runs through him and gets the wide open touchdown anyway. It was also funny to see him score the touchdown, them call it back, say he was out of bounds, and then immediately score that touchdown that we're talking about with the with the double move. That was pretty interesting to watch. And then, of course, he got wet one more time with the catch off the guy's shoulder pads. He was quite angry in this game, and you could see that – he really wanted this and he really resented the Titans for trading him and doing him the way that they did because it wasn't just 
the guys on the field messing with him. There was some of that, sure, but you could see in every step and every move that A.J. Brown made on the field today, he was really trying to stick it to the Titans and really show them what's what. And he absolutely got his revenge in a, in a huge way because not only did he make those sick catches, nearly three touchdowns. I mean, he you know, he scored a touchdown after the one touchdown, so whatever. But still, going big, getting those two huge plays, and then, you know, catching eight of your 10 targets. I mean, it's, it's a utter destruction uh, of a team that kind of decided that it didn't want to pay you. And they absolutely needed you not only in this game, but throughout the season, because they just haven't had the same explosion over the top since he left. And there's, there's been a lot more men in the box. It feels like when I'm watching the Titans play the game, And it's not like it was just against the Eagles who have the ability to man you up if they feel like it on the outside with Slay and with Bradbury. Bradbury incidentally dropped a pick that could have made this uh, a lot less close early on as well. But still, I really like him on the other side of Darius Slay. And then hopefully you get Chauncey Gardner-Johnson back off of IR when he's eligible in four weeks Uh, That makes a very solid cornerback trio that teams have had trouble with, uh, in addition to the rushers that they have that we'll we'll go over in a minute. So to see Tennessee get locked up by those cornerbacks and not really be able to produce anything on the outsides to give you some space to work the inside, that just underlines the, the mistake that this was to trade off A.J. Brown for the Tennessee Titans and, and AJ was very intent on letting them know it. And he, he succeeded in every possible way. It's funny how much more confidence I have in AJ than I did when the Eagles brought on Alshon Jeffrey. It's crazy. Just how much more talented I think AJ Brown is just how physical big he is and how well he moves for a guy of that size. And it's, it's playing out right in front of our eyes. And it's not just because A.J. Brown is good. Far from it. I I really like the way that Jalen Hurts has been playing. And I think he's made strides as a passer as well that we're seeing play out on the field. But still, much like, you know, Tua Tungavailoa or Josh Allen a couple years ago when he got Stephon Diggs surrounding your young quarterback with high talent guys that yes, may be expensive, but still have that talent to be able to take them to the next level and show them what it's, what it should be like to play with the receiver like that. Then it it makes all the world of difference to a developing quarterback. And I think we've seen that with Jalen hurts as well, because while I love Devontae Smith for sure, Uh, he doesn't profile as the same type of alpha number one receiver that AJ Brown does just simply because of his size. Like he's just not physical enough with his size to be able to fight through every cornerback. Like he's going to have trouble with the bigger guys like Jalen Ramsey. He's going to have trouble with Jalen Ramsey. If Jalen Ramsey is on him, good news is he doesn't have to be that guy. He can, AJ is going to draw that coverage or AJ is going to draw the number one guy typically in Devontae can be on the other side. But to my point, Jalen didn't have AJ last year. He's working with guys and and Devontae was hurt throughout the year as well. So when you're working with guys that are not quite number one and number two guys and are probably better just suited to be like a number three, like Quez is, who Quez is a great number three, right? And Pascal, it's a pretty good number four, right? But having them as your one and two, they're, they're missuited in the role and it really takes a lot of the value out of that player. And then you're asking Jalen to be able to produce wins in that environment. And now you put set him up in a situation where everybody's in their role. Quez has actually stepped up since Dallas Goddard has gone out a little bit too. So that's been nice. I think they still miss Goddard up the seams a bit. And I, I like the way that they kind of block him and then filter him out into space and get him the ball kind of horizontally as well and allow him to run with the ball with his physicality. So I think that'll be a big addition, getting Chauncey Gardner back, getting Indomitian Sue and Linval Joseph a, a little bit more time 
to get themselves all the way up to speed, even though they look fine. And then getting Robert Quinn in there as well to bolster the pass rush. So there's a, there's a lot of things that can happen for this team. And the way that the re- reports read is that Goddard is supposed to be back within the regular season. Uh, so hopefully have a little time to get himself, you know, rust knocked off before the playoffs. If the Eagles are going to make their deepest run. So not only do the Eagles look good today, not only do they seem to have everything going and seem to have proven some things to me in the passing part of it, but they also have some reinforcements coming, not to mention they got Jordan Davis back today, who looks like who we expected him to look like, especially in the run stopping part of it. Right. So getting him off this night and uh, I think he left the game at a certain point. So, you, you want to have him healthy for the, the main part of your schedule. And granted, you, you, you want to make sure you get that number one seed for sure. But also, I think it's especially important for the Eagles to have all of their horses for game time, because if they do, they are going to be quite formidable and really cause problems for teams. Because as we saw today, they don't have to run the ball the same way they did last year, right? Last year, had they run for this type of running performance, this game would have been a disaster, right? I mean, there's no way that the Eagles could have pulled this same type of game plan off with uh, the personnel they had last year. But now you got AJ, you got Devontae, and then and Quez and Pascal and the, and the rest are in their appropriate roles. Now it all makes sense. Now Jalen is able to work the ball appropriately to the different parts of the field. And he seems to have made some strides as a passer as well. It looks to me like everything is a lot more buttoned up than last year, including the throwing motion. Like the throwing motion doesn't look quite as extended. It seems like he's throwing it more over the top a little bit, and it seems to be more accurate because of it. And I don't know that I still feel like he's a upper level guy as far as the decision making, as far as the uh, the little nuances of being a quarterback. Like he doesn't he's he doesn't have that Tom Brady Jedi stuff going quite yet, but he's getting there and he's showing signs that he's able to progress each year. And those are things that can come with time as he gets more and more experience seeing these different coverages and being able to make these different reads while being in the same offense too, an offense that I feel like is evolving. Because like I said, last year, if this was the running total for this game, this is a loss for the Philadelphia Eagles. If you take the defense out, take the defenses out of it, in a vacuum, if you have to do what you did today to win this game passing wise, this doesn't happen last year. You have to have had to run the ball. And now you actually have that ability to kind of go with the flow. What is the defense going to give you? Oh, they're really tough in the middle, but you can work them on the outsides. Great. Let's do that to show the coaching staff making those changes and to have the personnel to make those changes. That's how you win football games. That's how you win playoff games. So ultimately for the Eagles, what does it come down to? Can Jalen Hurts make continue to make these plays? Can he continue to work from within the pocket and then be dangerous in all the other ways he already is? Because the running part of it, he's never looked more fluid and confident running the ball. Like he when he's out there running, the, the strides look perfect. He looks fast. And I don't worry about him the same way that I worry about other quarterbacks running the ball because he is sub so substantial. He's a legendary weightlifter for a quarterback and you see how substantial he is in the legs. It, it makes a lot of sense that he would probably be able to take hits better than a lot of the guys. Like he's, he's a lot bigger than Lamar, like, but he's not that much slower either. Like he's not as fast. Let's not get it twisted, but he's like the fourth fastest guy. Like the Justin Lamar, Kyler, all faster for sure, hands down. Maybe not in like a maybe give Kyler and Jalen if they ran like a hundred yard dash. Kyler's not faster, but the takeoff is incredible. The acceleration, I I include acceleration when it comes to the speed, and Jalen has it. Jalen has it in spades, but it's still going to come down to does the game like in the last two minutes the Eagles are down 
and you know that the Eagles have to pass to get this touchdown to win the game, is Jalen going to be able to execute the passes, execute the offense, and throw guys open and make really tight contested throws during that time? That's what this will come down to. And going into the season, I would have a lot of questions about Jalen in those type of situations, but I'm becoming more and more confident as things go along that he he might fare better than I would have thought possible in the first part because, number one, yes, he can win it with the legs too. When it comes time, we saw it in the Colts game that he was absolutely capable of going in there and winning it with his legs. And it's going to be really hard to force the Eagles – into that situation where Jalen has to become Joe Montana in the last two minutes and win the game. The Eagles are going to be really good at keeping themselves out of that situation. That's not a situation that anybody necessarily wants to be put into either. It's not like you want Patrick Mahomes back there to do it, right? You want Joe Burrow back there to do it, right? But you know, that's not that those teams want to do that. It's just that they can do that. And if the situation calls for it, and that's what it'll depend on for the Eagles is, will they be able to do that when it comes time? Like Jimmy G, I don't believe that Jimmy G can do that. And we saw it last year when they got the ball back. And did anybody believe that he was going to lead them past the Rams in that moment? No, I don't think they did because he's not capable of making all of those throws and, and working Sometimes you have to work outside the offense in those moments and improvise. And, and sometimes that's what the problem is. Like, I don't think that Kirk cousins is very good at improvising. That's part of his deal. They all have these deficiencies that can be exploited. And for Jalen, the Colts tried to exploit it when they played, they tried to keep him in the box, right? They tried to create a wall in front of him and then pinch off the edges and make him beat you with throws. And today they didn't try it exactly the same way, but they were trying to rush and they were trying to, you know, stop the run and everything. And then the Eagles were able to beat them on the outsides in this day and get the big win. And uh, it doesn't feel as big when you blow the Titans out the way that it happened, but still it's a good team, solid defense that has given people problems. And Derrick Henry can give any team problems on a given day. It just wasn't the Eagles today. Because in addition to the Philadelphia offense doing what we just talked about, the Philadelphia defense was all over the Tennessee Titans offense in a really disturbing way for the Tennessee Titans. Tannehill was absolutely gimpy coming into the game with the ankle. And even though he was running early on and and was somewhat mobile throughout the game, you could tell that he was not his full self. And that while he could in an emergency situation run, that he wasn't running full strength by any means because he, he's more of a weapon when he can do that. And, and like I said, while he ran a little bit, it was not as fast as he can run when he was going. And then he, after getting sacked seven times and being harassed throughout the day as he had to try and pass the Titans back into the game, he hurt his other ankle, which made him even more a mobile and uh, when you can turn Ryan Tannehill into a pure pocket passer in a way that they were able to during those times uh, it's a big time problem for the Tennessee Titans overall yes because they don't have A.J. Brown as we talked about but they would need more than A.J. Brown to attack downfield at this point and but really with the way that the things have worked out they just haven't had enough to threaten teams on the outside on a consistent basis. Now, it's a little reductive and a little results-oriented to say it exactly like that because the Titans absolutely did lose Traylon Burks uh, in the first part of this game who caught a really tough touchdown and held on to that touchdown while getting concussed on a huge hit, which got penalized but didn't feel insanely dirty at the time. And I hate that it hurt Traylon and that he had to go out of the game, but it was pretty impressive to see him catch it. And uh, I don't think that it's necessarily been his fault that the Titans haven't had everything they need to have on the outside to be effective with the way their offense is set up. Uh, Traylon has come on as of late. And while he probably will be out for next game with the way the concussion protocols are, which probably is good for his long-term health, it's certainly going to leave the Titans at, at a deficit because he 
has been adding explosion and has been able to get downfield and make big plays for this offense, just not as consistently as what they would have had in eight with AJ or with someone that wasn't a rookie that is expected to be worked into a run first offense. He, he, but, but to my point, he has been making those plays, but he's just not far enough along as an overall receiver to be what the Titans would need him to be and the threat they would need him to be to make this work at this time. It's not that they can't or that they can't pull turn this around necessarily, but I don't see really great avenues to get that done midseason the way that things are set up. The offensive line just isn't quite as dominant as it used to be. There's Ben Jones being mixed, nicked up, Luan has been hurt. So, I mean, it's just been a whole thing where there's been a lot of turnover there. And then when you're not able to dominate the line of scrimmage, especially in a game like today where the Eagles have solid outside coverage as well, then you're, it's leading to a lot of Tannehill having to hold the ball a bit. And then while the Eagles were selling out to stop the run, that they were doing it via penetration and getting up field. And that meant that they could rush the passer too. And rush the passer they did. And it's interesting on the Eagles part because it's not just the edges of the defense. I, I like Josh Sweat a lot. And... Brandon Graham has been a mainstay for a long time. And then you throw Hassan Reddick on top of that. And that's three pretty good pass rushers. Maybe none of them are absolutely dominant, right? But Brandon Graham has had his time as one of those guys, but he might be just a little bit past it, maybe. But you throw on Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat coming off the edges there. And then you you still have Fletcher Cox, who once also might not be everything he once was same with Ndamukong Sue. And then you also have Javon Hargrave. And, and I, I don't disparage those guys to say that they're not still good. It's just, they were like dominant number one, pay me $20 million guys at one time, or at least Sue was. And now they might not quite be to that level. Same thing with Linval Joseph, right? But they're absolutely serviceable, if not plus guys still. So you have that going across the front And then you have guys that you can man up with in Slay and the rest. And that's a situation that's tough to deal with for any team. So to see the Titans not get off against the Eagles, okay, you might be not getting off against one of the three best teams in the NFL, but it's still, that's no excuse. This is a problem for everybody because that's that's a front that is going to give you problems across the board. And if you have one guy, you have a, what you would call a Waldo, a, a bad lineman that other teams are looking for. They can just pretty much line up the way they would line up anyway and attack you. And they lost they lost Bennett earlier in the year. They don't have Quinn right now who they could have. So, I mean, this could even get better. So I'm not going to be all, too all over the Titans when they were just simply overmatched on the offensive side of the ball going up against this defense all throughout the day that had a really good game plan. I mean, they 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 played him right, getting penetration up the front, making sure that they stopped King Henry first while still being able to cover them on the outsides. I mean, it was it was pretty impressive. And when you can force Tannehill into these situations where he has to uplift this offense with his passing, that's a problem overall. And ultimately, that's a problem that the Titans are going to have to address with where they're going to go ultimately you know, with their team, they got some reps from Malik Willis later on after the Eagles brought in Gardner Minshew, but he's still pretty law raw as a passer. And I don't think that you can expect him to step into this situation and get the job done at this time because of that. I mean, as you don't have the horses, I expected a lot more from Robert Woods. Westbrook Akine is limited and is fine, but he's more of a three, right? He's more mis he's miscast where he's at. And then Traylon is not well enough developed in all the different parts of the game to step into AJ and to get, make everybody have their appropriate roles. And it just throws everything out of whack. And it's surprising because I had some expectations for Robert Woods to step in and do something for this team. And he just hasn't gotten the job done. It's uh, a, <laughs> 
the road the roto world uh said this was the reverse of a statement game and uh it felt very very appropriate and, and honestly i mean you could say this about pretty much the entire offense at this point like that was a reverse statement game for the entirety of the titans office the defense i mean they gave up 35 points but i mean they played better they played better than the offense did i'll tell you that if you're rating things overall they just simply couldn't be everywhere at once and they just couldn't hold them to 10 points i mean that just wasn't going to happen today so you got to score more points you got to put up better play from your quarterback position overall and i know he had bum ankles today but he's not the answer he is not an uplifter of teams he needs to be dropped into a team that already has like he you need to drop him into the san francisco 49ers something like that like i think he might be better than jimmy g that would be interesting but they're not going to do that i feel like this has run its course with tennessee they're probably locked in for next year with the quarterback money i would think but i don't know I'm you're seven and five, but your, your ceiling's limited and you took a swing with Malik and you got good value, I think, but I don't know. He seems pretty raw overall with the passing part of it. He's still got a long way to go with that. And your team's pretty good overall. Like, are you tearing it down? I don't know. You're it's kind of like with in the NBA, if you're the eighth seed, then you're not going to be in the lottery. So you're not going to have a chance at somebody really good, but then, you're also not going to have a chance at the championship likely either. Like, like, do you believe that Tennessee would run through any one of the Bengals, Bills, or Chiefs? I do not. And honestly, they're set up to fight the Ravens, but I don't know. I, I don't know that I would believe that either. What about the Dolphins? Like, who do you believe the Titans are going to beat at this point? I'm not sure. And if I'm them, I'm trying to get myself out of that middle but it's hard because you either have to be really bad to get down there for the quarterbacks or you're right here where you are and you're not ever going to advance beyond this one point and the reason I belabor this for the Titans is I really like Mike Vrabel and I like a lot of the things that they're putting around him with the defense and and the like question is the offense like what are we doing here where is this going how are we going to replenish this going forward? And did we make a huge step trading away AJ Brown? I know that's pretty doom and gloom. And I know that's not words we want to hear right now necessarily, but that's kind of where I'm at with this team. We're, we're going to make the playoffs because of how bad this division is, but are, are we going to be middle of the road because we beat up on this division? And then when it comes time, can't you can't get over the hump and beat the playoff teams. Like it's a, uh, it's m- mediocrity purgatory. So maybe the move is you pull the ripcord, you get what you can for Tannehill and you have a bad season under Malik Willis. It's not automatically going to be bad, but it's not going to be what a playoff si- situation. He's not that ready, but you have to play him to get him that ready. Like he has to gain that experience and uh, granted in a season where the uh, game's going to be moving way too fast for him, that might not be the move, right? But it might be the move in a season where he's had a chance to catch up. He's had the off season. He has reps late in this season. Like I'm all for getting him reps in this season, even though you're a playoff team, like I'm all for that because I want to raise the ceiling. And I think you either have to see what you've gotten him and see if he can raise it or, and if he can't, then you bought you bought him out. And that's tough because Derek only has so many more years where he can beat Derek like this. And you have a bunch of good personnel around him. So I don't think you can do that, but you've taken swings to try and kind of move yourself on and raise your ceiling in other ways with, you know, with the trailing thing with Robert Woods, Austin Hooper, a bunch of stuff that just hasn't worked out. By the way, just I, I said the word Austin Hooper. I want to say that uh, I like Okongwu a lot. So that's something they need to continue to work in there over Austin Hooper. Maybe maybe it's both because you run so much and you run heavy sets, but I think you have to get him some more snaps and some more action because he has some pop there. And 
it's weird because this team is in the playoffs, but I think they've got a lot to figure out and they need to, they need direction on offense. And honestly, I'm not that enthused by the scheme either. I don't find myself to be inspired by any part of it. So that leaves me shrugging my shoulders, wondering what we're going to do here and, and what are we doing here? Should be interesting. We've still got a lot of football left for both these teams. And like I said, Tennessee is going to make the playoffs likely regardless of what happens here with the way that this division is going. Well, that's what I've got for this game. If you've gotten to this point and haven't done so, download the podcast. Let me know that you're here and listening. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe. I'm going to be doing more games this week, and I got to this one on uh, Sunday. Uh, I actually am going to watch the Cowboy game on delay uh, so I could get this off to you for Monday morning. So hopefully it's appreciated and informative. I'll be doing more games this week as I'm, I'm going to watch them all. I just uh, how many can I podcast and get to? We're hoping for five to six. That's the goal. But I appreciate your time today and uh, have a great rest of your day.